Hey, I'm Tracy, and I'm here to help walk you through a little bit of the command line. This tutorial is aimed at beginners, so people who haven't are not used to using the command line, people who want to learn how to code but are still getting up to speed and more of on some of the more um, intermediate or beginner computer things. Uh, and a lot of learn to code books that teach you like how to do Python or JavaScript and whatnot are going to be using the command line. So I'm creating this video and also this book over here, the really friendly command line intro book to help walk you through that first little step of using the command line and getting comfortable with using text to navigate your computer rather than say using uh, visuals. So this book is also this little ebook, zine, magazine, whatnot. Uh, you can download it for free. You can print it out. I have a printable version so you can just staple it um, in the middle, kind of like this one. Uh, so go ahead and grab that if you want. The HTML is also on the website. So this video is kind of, you know, in addition to all the other free materials. And then you can also buy versions from, uh, for Kindle on Amazon, as well as all the eBooks through LeanPub. Links are on, are in the description below. And last but not least, this is also kind of an introduction to my other book. This is Hello Web App teaches you how to build a web app using Python and Django. And just like this video, Hello Web App is silly, down to earth, doesn't have any fluff. Uh, we're not gonna talk crazy computer science-y things. We're just gonna teach you how to use um, the command line and the book, teach you how to build a web app using Python and Django. So that link is also in the description. Check it out when you have a chance. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's get started. So here's the book, lovely cover actually done by my husband. So I'm just going to scroll down to pass the introduction here, which I just went over. So what's the command line? The best way that I can show the command line, um, command line kind of helps you navigate the, your computer kind of like finder. So up here you can see, this is the terminal program. So if you just searched for terminal, uh, that's not going to show up. There we go. Search for terminal in your computer or even going into uh, your finder, going to applications, scrolling all the way down to, where is terminal? All right, terminal does not show up in application, but it's on your computer. Uh, you can search for terminal using um, a command shift and finding it that way. And terminal allows you basically to speak to your computer. All these other programs, every program on your computer, like Photoshop, if you have it, or even finder, uh, in the background, these programs are using text, essentially, using text to talk to your computer. And the terminal is gonna allow you to talk to your computer as well without having these like programs interpreting your clicks, translating into text, and then sending those commands to your computer. You can just skip that middleman and do those commands yourself. So you can see here, this is the terminal, this is how it shows up. This is my username for my computer, or, yeah, my username, Lime Daring. You can find me on Twitter and whatnot. Uh, Perseus is the name of my computer. So this is gonna look a little different on your computer when you initially see this. Uh, it's gonna be your username, your computer name, and then this dollar sign, this uh, tilde dollar sign is basically saying, you know, type here. This is like where you can start typing. So I'm gonna go over to the book here. Uh, and show you how it looks on there, username at computer. When you see commands uh, in other learn to code programs or tutorials or videos or whatnot, they usually gonna start their commands that you type into the command line with a dollar sign. They're not gonna include this beginning bit because it's gonna you know, be different for your computer and their computer. So just FYI, that's why you might see Windows people say, hey, type this in your command line and it says dollar sign, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's just to really indicate, hey, look, here's the command line. You don't actually type that dollar sign in. Confusing. Uh, I'm just going to skip over this Unix stuff, how this tutorial is different. Ah, this is the part we're going into right now. So this is called the prompt. I didn't get that. Didn't say that before, but it's called the prompt. And here's where you can see, this is how things usually show up this dollar sign, your command to type in, uh, in most coding tutorials, like Hello Web App, my own, or other ones you find on the web. So let's start out with our first command. The first thing we're gonna do, use is ls. ls essentially, like, it's short for list. 
And you'll find that a lot of commands for your command line, for Unix, for um, uh, that you type in are all going to be like really shortened real words. So L um, ls is list, and there's a bunch of others we're going to go over. And they're shortened because when you get used to the command line, you're going to be typing them in a lot. And you don't want to continually type out list. It's a lot faster to just do ls. And it, you'll see as you get along how um, it'll kind of like insert in your brain and you'll remember these things without having to think about it. So in your terminal, just type out ls and press enter. Again, this is my computer, so yours is going to look a little different. You can see that it just came up a whole bunch of uh, different items. And if we go back to our finder window and go to your uh, home directory, which again for me is called Lime Daring, you notice that these things are the same. So there's applications, my Creative Cloud files, desktop, documents. Then over here we have applications, Creative Cloud files, desktop, documents. So you can see that we're listing out the items in our home directory just like clicking on your username, your home directory in Finder. It's kind of like a one-to-one. -one. So next thing we're going to do is learn how to navigate these different folders, different directories. So we're going to learn how to change directories, which is shortened to CD. So looking at all the, little all the different uh, directories that are in my home folder, I'm going to change directory into music. Now, if your folders, your directories are uppercase, make sure to include the uppercase. So I say CD uppercase music and I press enter. And there wasn't like any kind of uh, like thumbs up, good job, this was a successful message. It just goes into a new line, but you can see that our prompt changed into tilde slash music. Now over here, I'm gonna go into our, uh, into Finder, and I'm gonna click on music. And you can see that I have a test file and an iTunes folder in here. Now in my command line, I'm going to list out ls, what is in this current directory? And you can see, boom, we are in iTunes. We have, well, in the directory, there is an iTunes directory and my test.txt uh, file. So it's essentially like, I like to imagine it, me in these directories, and I took a step forward into that music directory. And then I'm like, what is here? And then here are the files and the directories are in that folder. And again, just like clicking on the folders in your finder window. Do do next. So how do we go for how do we go backwards? Because we went into that music folder, but there's like no way of saying like CD back, and there's no file directory name back. So how do you go backwards? And that's the way you do that is you do dot 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 dot. Maybe like two step back. That's a good way to remember it. So if you do CD dot dot in your terminal, you notice that we've the prompt changed from slash music saying like, hey, we're in music uh, to just tilde. So that says, hey, we're in our home directory. And we can say ls and we can see that we're like really back in home directory. So one little um, tidbit I put it into here, this is kind of hard to illustrate in the illustrated version. So I'm happy you're watching the video is that you can actually uh, if you're in Finder and you're like, I want to go to this folder in Finder, but I want to do that in my terminal. And instead of typing out, say, say I wanted to go to like music slash iTunes slash album artwork slash cloud. Say I want to do like CD change directory into this cloud directory. I don't want to type out all of those words. All I have to do is click and hold on cloud and drag it into my terminal. And boom, you can see that I put it in there. There's a problem here is that I didn't put CD in the front. So if I just press enter, it's not going to work. It just says it is a directory. It doesn't have any instruction of what to do. It's just like, ta-da, it's a directory. Put it in here. So if you type in CD space, then drag it in and then press enter. Boom, you can see I am in slash music slash iTunes slash album artwork slash cloud. And then to go back, 
instead of just going cd enter cd dot dot enter you can actually chain these dots you can jump back multiple steps so slash cd slash our music i need to go back one more so you can chain these dots with a little slash in between so we can go cd music and cd back and we can drag things in and you can kind of just navigate your computer that way which is pretty cool instead of using the finder window next we are going to learn how to create a file now usually for creating files without the terminal you would go into say microsoft word and you'd open up a file and you'd save it and then boom you have a new file in your command line you can make a file of any type because you just you can just put in file name dot file type so like dot jpeg or dot txt or uh, dot pdf and it's going to create a file of that format so uh, it's pretty powerful which is awesome um, and it's really fast especially when you are again going through a learn the code tutorial and you're creating all the files you need for your say new website uh, instead of going into your your um, uh, editor and just like constantly creating files and saving them, you can just go in your terminal and just be like, make this file, make this file. And then how do you make the file? We use the command touch. It's like the touch of God. I like that. Uh, it allows you to create commands, like makes create files from nothing. So I'm gonna go into my music folder again, my music directory. And I'm gonna list all the files in there. I have a I already have one test file in there. But I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna say touch hello.txt. And that's the name of the file I want. You can name it whatever you want. And I'm choosing .txt just because it's a nice small file format that I can use. Doom, boom, no success message, whatever. I make those noises myself. They're usually in my head. <laughs> but if you go ls list the files that are in that directory, in that music directory, you can see that we have our that previous file, the iTunes directory, as well as our new hello.txt. Done. Next, moving file. We create a file, this file is empty. By the way, I should go in here and show you that it was created in our, um, uh, in Finder, see? blank thing, there's nothing in it, da-da. Say we wanted to move this into our iTunes folder. No reason why, there's no reason why we want to do that, but we're just going to do it because we can. Move is a pretty easy to remember command because it's just MV, move, MV. So back in our directory, we're in the directory with that hello txt. Like, okay, we exist in that little space. And we're going to say move, that hello.txt file, and we're gonna move it into our iTunes folder. This is just memory for me. I know that the command for move is usually mv, the file, and then where I wanna move it. So after you do this for a while, you're gonna remember these things as well, but I'm gonna have a cheat sheet so it'll help you remember like the order of those commands. So move hello.txt into our iTunes folder. I want to press enter. And we saw in that finder window, it actually just disappeared because it got moved. In finder, you can see it's over here in iTunes. And then in our terminal, we can also go into iTunes, list everything out. And you can see here is that hello.txt file. Now, how do you move backwards? Uh, that might again also not be obvious and then we're also going to use that dot dot notation that trick that we used uh, for CDing for change directory so in our iTunes folder listing everything out we see that hello.txt we are going to move hello.txt again or move it up a folder like up I say it up I mean back a folder, like move it, um, if you think of it as a tree, like home folder and then music, or home folder, music folder, iTunes folder, we're gonna move it up the tree. And that's, I'm gonna use that dot dot notation. So if you look over in our finder window, you can see that it got moved from, um, from the iTunes folder back into our music folder. And then we can even 
move it from our music folder over. So to move, uh, we could, to move it from our music folder into our home folder. You might notice that we are currently in our iTunes folder. So you could move yourself back a step by CDing back into your music folder, CD dot dot, and then again, do move hello.txt dot dot to move it into your home folder. Or you can use that dot dot notation to indicate, uh, best way to show it, move. I'm in iTunes. Uh, the hello.txt file is not in here. It's in the music folder. But I can say move dot dot. So when I'm looking for my file name, I can say, hey, in that other directory, that higher tier directory in our tree, dot dot, hello dot txt. And then I can say dot dot. So it says move the file that is in the directory higher up in the tree up another directory. Oop, I actually uh, made a small mistake here. I need to, this is this lat up another directory is not based on uh, the location of the file. It's based on the where you are and I am in the iTunes folder. So I actually need to say up two directories. And you can see in our finder window over here that I got moved from music in. So again, these things might look at the start kind of confusing, but you know, I would encourage you to just use, use your terminal just to move things around, just like create a random little uh, file and move it in and out of places and then move yourself in and out of those places and just practice going in and moving things and making new files because I believe me, the more you do this, the easier it's going to get. It's just going to be second nature for you. Okay, copying files. How do we create a copy of a file? This is useful when you're learning how to code. Say if you're doing a tutorial that requires you to make three template HTML files instead of, you know, touching, you know, using touch to create an empty, like create a file and then working on it and then touch and then working on it touch, working on it. You can like create one file and then copy it and create three identical files. Yeah, as you would. So normally you would just go in here and you right click on your test.txt and you would say duplicate and it would do test.copy.txt. So you could do that in your finder, but we're going to learn how to do it in terminal. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to go back into our music folder into iTunes, move into music. I'm going to list out the files in the music folder. And you can see there's that test.txt file that I created. And copy, again, just like move and ls, it's just a shortened real word. So copy is cp. So we're going to say copy, test. And then the next piece of the command is what you want to rename that file. It's not like Finder where, you, where I copied it and it did test copy.txt. Finder just like inserts that in there for you. When you copy via the terminal, you have to use, um, you doesn't like, it's not gonna do that. It's all like, ah, crazy error message that I can't even read still. Uh, you have to tell it what name you want. So test.txt and I'm gonna say goodbye.txt. Boom, that worked. You can see now there's another empty txt file in here, but it's called the goodbye and it's identical to test. So if I got rid of this and then my test.txt, I, I actually put something in it so it makes it more obvious that we copied it. Save that. And then I went here and I did this again. You can see that random string, the random uh, characters I put in are in there. So it did like actually copy the file. But we don't need two files that have random letters in it. So let's learn how to delete. Delete can be a little scary because uh, with the terminal, there is no trash can concept. There's no like going like deleting something via our finder like so moving to trash, but later on you can go in your trash and undelete it if you want. 
we need to delete something with a terminal, it is gone. There is no way of getting it back. We know that these two files, this goodbye.txt and this test.txt are uh, garbage. We don't want them. And that's all you have to do is do rm goodbye. And over here, I'm gonna go. Oh, I got rid of goodbye already. <laughs> that's why it doesn't exist. Uh, because I just deleted that goodbye file using Finder. It's not there anymore. So we're going to delete this test.txt instead, which you can see here in Finder. So I say remove test.txt and boop, it disappeared. It's gone, gone forever. So use rm, but no, that things aren't going back. Unless you use something like Git and Git is awesome. And I'll cover that in another video soon. So, We've been typing in this entire time, all of our commands, just like, like when I type out goodbye.txt, I've been typing it out entirely, but you don't have to do that because our terminal has autocomplete. It doesn't have autocomplete for commands, but it does have autocomplete when it comes to file names. So I'm gonna go back up to my home directory and I'm gonna list things out and you can see that I have that hello.txt and say I wanted to move that hello.txt into that music folder. So I move, hello, and I type that H, and I'm gonna press tab, and it gets auto-filled. Because the, the terminal says like, oh, there's only one thing in here that starts with the lowercase h, so you obviously mean that file. And I say move, hello.txt, and I can say music, and I'm gonna type that capital M and a U, and I'm gonna press tab, and it fills out music for me. So it makes it a lot faster for moving things or copying or whatnot. So you don't have to type out that entire file name or that fi entire um, directory name. Now, might notice that when I did music, I did an app, uppercase M and a U because there are two things in here with that start with an M. So say I wanted to move something else. Let's move, I'm gonna move that file back. Say music. Hello.txt. Actually, wait. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to do this the slightly different way. CD into music. And I'm going to say move hello.txt dot dot. Move it back up to my home folder. Back to our home folder. Let's it out. You see that hello.txt it's there. And I'm going to say move hello.txt. I use a tab to autocomplete that name. And if I just did an M, and I tabbed, it's like, wait, which M do you want? There's two things, there's movies and music. And then you can be like, oh yeah, I wanted music. And then type that extra letter and then press tab, and then you can move things over. So it will work magically if there's only one item of what you've typed in. If you can find that one item, it's gonna be like, cool, we got this. But if there's multiple matches for what you typed, and autocomplete is like, hey, there's a couple different options. Here they are, just FYI that happens. And um, it's still super useful because if you're in a giant directory and you're trying to remember what that file was or you couldn't remember the name, it'll help you narrow down the results. Another thing I like to use is pressing up to access previous commands. So in terminal, I'm gonna press the up button. Ah, there's that last command I put in. There's another command, there's another command, there's another command. So if you're typing like a command over and over and over, uh, you can just press up and you don't have to type the whole thing. You can just go up, it's like history for what you've been typing in. So that's super useful, you can use that. We're gonna move over to uh, some intermediate command line utilities. So sudo, you might have seen sudo in this very, very popular XKCD comic where the person is asking someone to make a sandwich and the person says no, and then they use sudo and the person's like, okay. And sudo just means like, I'm the boss and in, in the computer terminal, uh, it's like, I am the owner of this computer, do what I say, like just do it. So you might see that a lot on other learn the command or learn the code tutorials might say sudo install something or other. Um, and that's just, 
the computer is going to whine. Sometimes when you install and it's going to be like, hey, are you the owner? And if you use sudo in front of all your commands, it's like, I am the owner. And it's going to ask you for your computer's password. So that's what sudo is. sudo, super user do, or um, substitute user do, whatever, sudo. That's what that is. And you're going to see that when you are going through other tutorials. Another thing we have not done yet, we've only been working with individual files so far, those little TXT files that we've been messing around with. And you can move directories as well. Now, if I, I go back up here and let's see, is my hello.txt in here? No, it's in music. So I'm gonna move into that music directory uh, and I'm going to, in here, uh, I'm just going to create some test directories and move that instead rather than files. So you can't just do touch directory name because touch is for individual files. You have to use another shortened long word called make directory, M-K-D-I-R, mkdir. Like that. So we're going to make a directory in our music folder instead, and I'm going to call it test. And you can see in our finder that popped in and in here, LS, you can see that test is in here. Right now you might be able to notice that uh, the terminal nicely color codes things. So you can see that our directories are colors uh, and our files are black, uh, just black. So that's handy. So you know that that's a directory rather than a file. Next, we're gonna try to move this, uh, this new empty directory that we created. We're going to move. This one's just the same as the uh, as moving files. It's actually just MV. It's no like move dear. This one's exactly the same. So we're going to say move our test. We use our autocomplete. And that slash is not necessary. You might notice when you type it in, you can just do test. But when you autocomplete, it adds that slash in there. Don't worry about that. So we're going to move that test directory into our iTunes directory. And in Finder, it disappeared. And then there it is, that empty directory. And I can also go back into iTunes and I can move, test, back up. And you can see it moved back over. Another thing I haven't really covered yet is this dot notation. What if you were in the iTunes folder? Woohoo! I didn't mean to do that. All right, there we go. But if you were in the iTunes folder and you wanted to move something from another folder into your current folder, I'm in my terminal. That test directory is in our music directory. And I'm in the terminal, I am in the iTunes folder. So I want to say move the test directory, which is in the previous, in the, um, the directory higher up in the tree, and move it into my current directory, which is a single dot, single period. And you can see in Finder that I got moved from here over to here. So single dot means current place. Next, we're going to delete directories, uh, just like, uh, just like using files, deleting files, when you delete it, it's gone. But when it comes to directories, there is a um, new thing we're going to learn, which is adding in flags. So if I wanted to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this test directory back up. So I'm going to say, um, oops, I'm going to move this test directory back a folder, CD back back. Now I'm in the music directory. Here's that test folder. I'm going to move that hello.txt into the test. Move hello, you, wrong one. Move hello.txt into test. And in our finder, we can see that's moved over here. So we have a directory and it is not empty. In my music folder, where you know the, the home parent of that test folder, I'm going to use that rm command. And I'm going to try to delete the directory. And you might notice that the terminal is not like that. It says, hey, this is a directory. And it's saying that because there are files in that directory. And it's like, all right, you're deleting the directory, but there's a lot of things in it as well. Do you want to delete those things too? So dash R means recursive. 
it basically means uh or like i like to think of it as like repeated it's going to keep doing things and dash r says all right for rm for remove it says hey remove this as well as everything repeat go through every content everything that's inside that directory and delete it as well so we're going to remove dash r our test directory and it's gone the files in it are gone the directory is gone it's gone forever so that's how you delete a directory now if the directory is empty it's not going to complain you can just delete it with rm but if there's files in that directory you have to use dash r and um, to tell it that it's okay to go through all the files and delete those as well when it comes to the command line there are a billion flags for like everything we'll explore a few more but uh there's not just like these commands for like moving and creating and uh copying files there's also like flags that'll alter how things are done and you'll learn them as things go times go on but really like i just want to teach you the basic commands you're going to be using the most often but there's things like that like dash r that will add like an extra ability or power to our previous command so do 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 uh Oh, we already went over that current dot thing uh, about how to move things into my current directory. Uh, next thing I'm gonna go over is wildcards. So to set up this example, I am going to create two files, that two empty TXT files. In fact, I'm going to create a hello.txt and then I'm going to copy that hello.txt into a goodbye.txt. Now, if I wanted to get rid of these, both of these files, I can say rm goodbye.txt, press enter space, and then rm hello.txt, press enter space, and then both of them be gone. But I can also delete things um, using a wildcard. If I wanted to delete both of these things, in my, direct, my music directory, I only have two files that are .txt, and I want to get rid of them both. And I can say remove everything, which is that star, that asterisk, that has the .txt file extension. And you can see both of them disappeared. And you can use this in multiple places when you're um, uh, specifying paths or specifying file names. You can use this, this wildcard if you wanna say match everything um, in this like spot in my command. Uh, that, and then, um, so I said match everything with a .txt. You can use that for other, um, uh can't think of another example right now i usually use it for deleting files just like that with the same file name but you can use it in other places as well okay so wrapping things up something went wrong because the terminal is very plain it doesn't have a lot of hand holding there's no success messages there's no like there's some like error messages, but they're kind of hard to understand. I wanted to go over some ways of troubleshooting when you're using your terminal. So first thing is your command did not work. The biggest, like the, this happens most often if you are in the wrong directory. So if you're trying to move a file from one place to another place and your command is assuming that you are in that, um, that directory they're moving from. So if I wanted to, uh, I'm gonna create that empty file. I wanted to say, I wanna move that hello.tc into iTunes, but I'm accidentally in my home folder. And I said, move hello.txt into iTunes. And it's like, that doesn't work. It's because I'm in like the wrong location. I said, hello.txt, assuming that is in the same directory that I am in. You gotta make sure that you're in the right folder for running your commands. And this is especially important when you're say, like my book teaching Python and Django, there's a lot of commands that are using this, this uh, one file. And a lot of trouble happens because you're trying to run commands using this file, but you're accidentally in a different um, directory. So that's just number one, make sure you're in the right directory for what you wanna do. And you can like uh, recheck about where you are by i like to use ls i like to look at the contents of that folder and reassure myself like that's where i am there's another command called pwd and it also tells you it'll just print out where you are 
So make sure you are, you know, in your little like mind space, you have to imagine where you are and you can kind of reconfirm things by using LS to see the files. You can use PWD to see where you are and make sure that your commands are actually supposed to work in that folder, in that directory. All right, next one we wanna go over is uh, like, what happens if you get stuck? Because sometimes when you are in the command line, you might open a file in your command line or you might run something, or even if you've like typed in this like crazy long thing, you don't wanna be like backspace, backspace, backspace. Thing to remember is control C. And I don't mean command C, I mean control C. Command C is usually what you use in computer to copy. Control C is what you're gonna use in your terminal to get out of situations. So I've typed this huge thing and I'm like, wait, I don't like, I don't like this. I wanna cancel that command C. And it just like does nothing with that. That that wasn't run, it wasn't, it just, it's basically I like escape. Now, I have a couple other options here because there are some situations you might get into the command line where command C does not work. And don't wanna get into all the situations just yet, but in my brain, my escape thing is always trying command C's first. And if that doesn't work, then I try command D or escape or Q. One of those four things will work. I talked to other experienced computer people and they were like, like, you get into this habit of just mashing all four of those things at some point. You're like, how do I get out of this? And you just mash, mash that and it'll work. So command C is how you escape a command or if you get into some, uh, it's like a cancel, you wanna cancel something you've done in your terminal. But if that doesn't work, try command D, try escape, try Q. Uh, that'll help you get out of most situations. Okay, next concept is, um, Files that start with a dot. There is a there are files on our, our computer that are known as hidden files, and they start with a dot. And you can't see them when you're in Finder. Finder automatically hides hidden files, titled. So if we're in our music directory, I'm gonna wipe that because I was messing around earlier. So if we're in music directory and we did ls, we can see that our music directory has hello.txt and iTunes. But if we do ls and we use the flag dash a, all, you can see that there's more things in this folder that then originally appeared. There is a file called ds store. There's a file doll called localize. Both these are starting with a dot, so you can't see them when you're using your finder window. You can also add another flag, which is l, and you can chain flags by just, you know, dash L A is two different flags are added. You don't have to do that. You just chain them. And it's going to take these files and put it into a more uh, readable format in this little column. Now the dot, uh, I think that means current directory. Never really thought about that before. And the dot dot is like, here's how you get back. That's where that dot dot comes from. When you say, Hey, go back a directory. That is that dot dot. It means, Hey, here's, here is the way to go back. It's like a link over. So those things you don't have to worry about, but you can see that there's two hidden files in here. And all these things are hidden from our finder window. And that's it. That is pretty much all the commands. It's like 99% of the commands I use personally as a developer day to day. There's other things I use. There's other utilities I use like Git. But when it comes to using the command line, this is pretty much it to start with. This is it. This is it. Just navigating the command line, learning how to make files, learning how to copy files, and starting to get an idea that these commands also can be altered with flags. So yeah, I hope this was interesting. I hope this was useful. Leave a comment down below. If you um, comments or questions, leave them down below or send me an email. Uh, check out Hello Web App, which is my book for learning how to code. You can also check out Hello Web Design, which is my book for learning how to design. Here's the command line intro, little mini book that I created. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.